that really the tower over there? Is that like where my wait, was that where she died over there? Was the tower like a part of the building that she would have? Huh. I mean, it could be. You gotta admit, okay, these are my favorite kind of views in games. People know that, like these kind of views like this. You just sit back and just watch. And you just see a massive world. And I mean, yeah, they're probably like little, you know, low detail, low pot, like little details and all that. That's why I love the Dark Souls series so much, because there's so many points where you can just sit there in a corner somewhere and just watch. And even like games like Borderlands do that, because Borderlands, what they do is they don't have like an invisible wall or anything, they just have a cliffside and they just have this massive expanse just going f super far out with like large mountains and, and just those kind of views I love so just seeing this like river go out and you see like the city and the mountains behind it ah oh, I just love it which is weird because I usually don't like like in real life I don't like seeing that like in real life I don't care about sitting beside like a amount of, it's, I, I like the I like video games because it's probably because they always, they always make sure they look nice. You know, it's not like you're just watching another ocean or another mountain. There's always something, there's always a sense of adventure and wonder that comes with a video game, I guess. In real life, it's like, well, it's just Earth. <laughs> I know, I sound like downing when I say that. I mean, I can see the beauty of it. It's just not my kind of, not the kind of beauty that I like. I like this kind of beauty. Details to world, little things like that. Like, what was that? And mystery, especially like the wonder of like what was the history behind certain things too, you know. Especially when you see like ruins and stuff like that. It's also why I like um, Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus is an amazing game for that. So many times you can just sit in a spot and you see a massive part of the world you can explore, and you know, who knows what all of it means. Anyways. Off to Caldwin's bridge, sir. We'll get our sleep later. Yep. Just climb aboard when you're ready. Let's go get Sokolov. Now, I don't know if you guys remember who Sokolov is. He was the guy at the beginning who was painting uh, the Overseer. The guy that I annoyed the living crap out of. Yeah, him. What do you think, Corvo? Caldwin's Bridge. You've been in the city for years, but you lived in Dunwall Tower with the late Empress, so maybe you haven't visited the bridge before tonight. Something to look out for. See all them lights on the water? That's right. We'll be spotted for sure. You're gonna have to shut off their power before I can pick you up. Now, about bringing Sokolov back alive, he's smart. Maybe even smarter than Kira. Got the whole Dunwall under his thumb with all that natural philosophy business. New technology, potions and the like. Seems dangerous to me. But what do I know? That's an interesting little... I'll meet you at the arches under Sokolov's place when you're ready, Corvo. Assuming, of course, you've taken care of those floodlights. I want to go under, like, does he mean these lights here? Or does he mean, like, lights like those ones that are, like, searching? Like, the searchlight kind of deal. Even even so, I don't really see how he'd be spotted with, with the lights or not, because it's still pretty bright out. I mean, you'd still easily see a boat moving in the water over there. But yeah. Also, the whole little thing, like, you know, how all the science is dangerous. I mean, any form of invention of any kind, no matter how much we go forward or backwards, there's always a danger. When we go forward, we create things that help us and make things easier. But at the same time, we create new ways to hurt people and damage lives. So the simple question is, is just how far can it go? That's the question we got to ask. Not like, oh, can it do this one little thing? Can it do this other little thing? No, no. We just have to wonder how far can people take it? And if the distance is too much, should we or should we not? You know, we made video games, we made technology like TVs, but people are like, yeah, well, it brings the problem of addictions and laziness and stuff. And yeah, but it also brings, you know, connection and community and the ability to like share information and stuff like that, you know, which is all really good. So it's just a matter of how much damage can it cause compared to how much it can help. You know, nuclear power powers this shit ton of stuff, but it also has the ability to literally destroy the world. So should we have actually created it? You know, it's questions like that. Oh, medicine. Medicine and stuff like that, that kind of stuff. It's capable of saving and healing and curing diseases. While, um... While all at the same time, people can, like, you know, have learned how to, uh... Medicine has done like other things, like it can poison people and stuff like that as well. And people have found ways to do 
a lot more dangerous things with it, or it can potentially cause other side effects that we weren't aware of. So, you know, it's all because of that. These are all like really heavy topics, probably. So I'm not gonna go super deep into them, but uh, yeah, it's just a matter of knowing what the what the farthest it can go, and if the farthest is too dangerous, then that's when we shouldn't do it. But in the end of the day, no matter what, any sort of progress will help and hurt, no matter what. There's no there's nothing that will be built that will never be able to be used. Guns. Guns are one of the biggest reasons why people can get killed, but at the same time, it's also one of the e one of the ways we can more easily hunt and collect food, you know? It also acts as a good way for people to defend themselves as well, so... That's an end of defending yourself from the same thing that's trying to kill you. It, doesn't, it makes it redundant, but you know what I mean. You know, there's always goods and bads to everything. So... There we go. That that's your uh, super deep questioning conversation that leads to very controversial comic sessions part of my video. So let's see where that goes from there. Also, really, I couldn't reach that. It's so annoying. This is the one way of getting through here to do this. Ow! 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 Right! Right! Electricity. The thing turns on. I didn't check to see if there's anything behind me. Nope, there is. There is, however. There you go. And now, we have end time level 2. Oh yeah. Alright, let's 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 start destroying some shit. First things first though. Where are you, phone? Get over here. Oh, it's not even ringing. Somebody else answered. Alright, good. <laughs> oh, wait, the bone charm. Uh, God. Excuse you?
And here you go. Spirit water. Oh, drink for certain churches all a small amount of mana. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know why it's a small. I guess it's if you ever you put in, you get you get put into combat. It's it's to limit how much you can use it. But outside of combat, you just spend the living hell of it, and you're pretty much good. That was a good example when I talked about last episode when I talked about how like your momentum is kept, and so you want to use uh, the blink early, not late. That was a good example because I only just started falling. And so the game thought that I just fell like a, like about this much when I landed on the boat because the entire distance I moved with blink didn't count to increase my mon momentum. So yeah. But if I hadn't used my blink there, I would have died because I would have gained enough momentum to hurt myself. Momentum does not carry over when using blink. Or, I mean, momentum does carry over when using blink. As in, like, if you, if you use it, you keep whatever momentum you had before the moment you used it. So teleporting when you're just starting to fall... And you teleport to the ground, you'll only take the damage equal to just starting to fall, which is nothing. Well now, Mr. Pratchett. Even a wealthy man like you needs the city watch. Gangs are cutting throats and smashing windows left and right. And the weepers, excuse me, the plague victims are worse. Are you saying the Lord Regent is wrong for imposing curfew? It won't do you any good to bait me, officer. But don't worry, I'll be fine. I'll profit. A smart man can come out ahead, even in the time of plague. Sure, like that Sokolov. He's doing fine. Always a lot of exotic items coming and going from his place. Keeps this place running, at least for now. Yes, yes, if by exotic you mean foul-smelling as a witch's bottle. The royal physician will be fine too, until he crosses the wrong man. dogs. I hate how you can't like stealth kill the dogs either, so they're just really annoying to deal with. Wait, what, shit, he has a gun? Oh shit. I didn't want to kill you right away, but you gave me no choice, buddy. Four. that. Four. Oh, no, no. Three. Four, three, seven. All right. There we go. Four, seven, three. All right. So what was that? Basically, is that there is a hint here. Right here, you're supposed to read this. Remember the truth is in the paintings. The way to the truth starts with the crowded streets. Cause you into the basically just like that. It's a super obvious reminder, though. You just gotta look through the, at the paintings, and you'll find uh, the codes which are there. Or you could do like you know, what some people do, and you just brute force your way through. That that, that looked really weird. Did you guys see that? Graphical glitch. It pops up where it is and not like. Yeah, combination required. 
You just like some people, they just do this, basically. And eventually you find it. You just do it 473 times. Which is, trust me, not that much compared to sometimes, like, the, like some of the saves later on, I go like, all the way to like 800 or 900. <laughs> Focusing your way through those ones are not as fun. But still possible, right? So. These are people. Um. Mad survivor. Do you have a gun? Also a shrine. Rivers change course over many lifetimes, and eventually all bridges tumble down. A thousand years ago, there was another city on this spot. The people carved the bones of whales into runes and inscribed them with my mark. Children still find them washed up in the river. Anton Sokolov has made a great study of my runes, but he's not special like you are. He wasn't chosen, and he doesn't wear my mark. So he can't unlock their secrets. Sokolov believes there are specific words and acts that can compel me to appear before him. He searches old temples in Pendicia and ruined sub-basements in the flooded district. He performs disgusting rituals beneath the old abbey. But if he really wants to meet me, he could start by being a bit more interesting. Yep, I really like the outsider because he feels like this really powerful being. So, journal entry part three, journal entry part one, 19 day, month of seats. What will I do? She left and took her things back to her family, as if that was help. That will help. The play will get us all. Third day, month of nets. I've been offered work on one of the whaling boats. I'll be leaving this place at last. Later, I will find a place on Tivia, to the north. The winters are cold there. No rats, no plague. Last day of the month. My fortunes have turned. I found something shiny. Shiny and old. Ugh. God, I'm tired. Looks like whalebone, which is supposed to be lucky. Also a dead guy, so... Yeah. My cousin Emil is coming soon, bringing a bird to roast. I'm going to see if any of the, uh, any of the shops are still open. Maybe we can buy apples or some potatoes. I put my whalebone carving on the shelf, but I could not see it from some parts of the room, so I made a little pedestal for it. It looks nice in the candlelight. Sometimes I dream about it. In the dreams, it may sound like the wind through a broken window. On some nights, the wind sounds like a voice. I was supposed to go to the docks to ship out, but I remember it too late. It was days ago. It was kind of crazy. I, I wonder though, like, if he finds the bone charm, I'm assuming in the runes? I'm assuming... Well, wait, let's read no number three. Ugh. Must have my cousin come. My cousin came. We fought over it. When I came to, into my room, and he was holding it. I screamed at him and we fought, and I am filled with remorse. He's still sitting in the corridor across from the candles. He was a thief. I wonder how he knew about it. Coming to dinner was a trick. Maybe he told others. Barricades in the halls outside. It is safe now. The watch came, taking people away. The neighbors. Someone in the building has the rat plague. It's gone now. It promises to protect me. Each night it promises. So yeah, I, I wondered, like, did he just find the whalebone? Because he got lucky and then went crazy because of it? Because he had side his powers or whatever? Or did he meet the outsider? Like, it doesn't say that he meets him. So does that mean the outsider chose to have him here? Or is it because, uh, you know... Like, it's like Granny Ray. Granny Ray has clearly been chosen by the Outsider. That's clear that the Outsider chose her to have her powers. Stuff like that. But this guy doesn't look like he has powers. Also, he did take out a sword, so I'm assuming he was going to attack me. It's kind of weird. He's a mad survivor. I don't know if there's any other mad survivors in the entire game. But yeah, it's uh, there's some interesting little tips of that. The Outsider is hard to understand, of course, because that's kind of the point. Like, how he works. It's clear like, he just like he likes seeing things. You know, he's just, he's just a curious guy that just has powers and wants to enjoy himself because he's probably some super being that's just bored and so he messes with things. Kind of like how we do in games, you know, like that we play black and white. That's what we do. We're, we're like the outsider. We, we, we have fun. We, either we want to see, see see how cities become prosperous or maybe we like seeing how people turn on each other and kill each other, you know? It's, it's a game to them. Same way how video games are games to us. Now we know what the 
Alec guards are doing. The reason you scout is so you don't end up in a cell. What Alec did was the exact opposite of scouting. Hey there, boys. Come on, get Let's him. get this guy. Really? Wait a minute. Really? Did that actually work? I'm impressed. Wow. Slackjaw's boys come down the street to slit your ricker. It'll be fun to watch them turn to ash. There was a time when we didn't need these things to keep a gang of kids down. I think since the plague hit, none of them expects to live past 20. So why be scared of anything? Yeah, like I just hit the thing and they ran out and they got hit by this thing, the arc, the arc pylon. Here's a demonstration of what the arc pylon does. Hi. Ow. Ow. Dead. Just you're just dead. It's it's an instant hit. You can't avoid it. It does a shit ton of damage on the higher difficulty. It instantly kills you if I'm correct. And it attacks really quickly. Even on the easy difficulty, that thing will destroy you. So. Oh. All right then. This is a thing now. Wait. I have the wrong ability on. Now what you could do though. Have been time. Quiet. Level two. Stop time. And do this. And just walk across. If you have slow down time, it's not enough. Stop time, however, is. So that's all dealt with. So I got quiet there for a second. I tend to get really concentrated on sometimes on my games. You gotta deal with this thing. No, where does it get connected to? That way. Can I sneak around this way? I can. Interesting. Alright. Now, um... Oh, hi! What the freak? Okay. Oh, hi. Alright, then, that works. This is actually, by the way, this is actually my least favorite uh, level in the entire game. First of all, because these arc pylons are literally abused, so there's no tomorrow. But second of all, is because of the fact that, um,. That it's super linear compared to linear. Sorry, linear, not linear. Linear. 
but it's super linear compared to um linear compared to uh other levels in this game it's just like it's just a straight path path all the way to the end level the end level gets a little bit more open but it just it feels like you're being kind of pushed down a specific path throughout the entire thing and it, it, it really does suck because it could have been a good map it just ended up not being a good map see here uh, I'm correct there's option number one there's option number two promise can I get it without getting shocked at crying out loud you have to be really quick about it uh, it's really really annoyingly placed because the other problem will pretty much always get you the first time you get. Did you know? Why are you going the completely wrong way? How did the arc pilot not kill you guys? How'd you guys get around? Ah. Alright then, so, moving on. I'm putting a lot of unnecessary effort here. But see, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Like, I want to get over there, but as far as I know, the only way to do that is by lowering the bridge. That is the only way, or at least getting up to the bridge. Which requires you to go through this. I mean, there's a few ways you can climb up this, but in the end of the day... Uh, I hate when your blink doesn't go where you want it, because I know I can make that jump like this. I just, I actually misclicked. But yeah, um... You have to just go through this entire process of climbing up this thing. Which is kind of annoying, to be perfectly honest. It's like... Oh, your whole point of the game is to, you know, give the player a choice on how to get through the area, right? So why force us to kind of do this? Go this way. Hi there, buddy. Can see to you? That's a weird word to say. But hey, I won't judge your manner of speech. I remember there being a possibility of like knocking people like off, like platforms using Blink. But I was blocking. Wow. Okay. God damn it, he's a way more healing push than I wanted to there. Being a little bit more guns blazing in this level, because it's just it's not easy to be stealthy in this level. Four. God, I hate those things. Like the watchtowers, those things just kill you the moment you walk into its area of effect. At least the watchtowers give you a chance. Now, um... 
Okay, good, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> I mean, I probably missed some things like blueprints and money, but whatever. So this is the area that gets a little bit more open. Just a little bit. Because it, 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 but it's a small area. And it's pretty easy to completely skip this area, believe it or not. Like, surprisingly, so you go up here. Or actually, oh. I'm all the way over here? Really? The game did not save when, um... Oh, there's a rune there. Thank God I died. Holy crap. I would have missed that. Uh. Yesterday, an overseer passed in the street near me, playing the strange music from the abbey. Beneath his mask, I could not see his face as he turned the crank on his music box. But I could see his, hear his voice muttering verses from the sacred text. Fear overcame me, because it is forbidden to carry, one, carry bone charms and similar such items for luck. The fear the, the overseers are completely unforgiving for this in this matter. Gripping mine in my pocket, feeling its warmth, I walked my head down. He was heading towards the royal physician's home, that shaggy Sogolov, that something at odd occurred. I swear the charm in my hand reacted to overseer's music, growing cold. Some inner vibration seemed to go still. I found a book that perhaps related to this, and I will study it so that I might understand. Yeah, a little bit more hints. That's from a longer work. Throughout the natural world, there are ripples that we can barely perceive with our senses. An ancient music permeating everything as a fundamental structural rule. Through it, you can work wonders without violating the natural world or begging favors from unfriendly spirits. Throughout my studies, I have found a 17-note scale derived from this phenomenon, and with the right equipment, those notes allow for astonishing effects. Not the least of these is the ability to calm the turbulence originating from the vo in the void, which we attribute to the outsider. So yeah, there is like a natural order kind of deal, I guess, and there's a like kind of like the outsiders being kind of like kind of screwing with it, kind of deal. But not like in the scientific way, just in the way that he's unnatural magic, basically. I don't know how he gained it, but he does. He has it. So. <clears throat> this first part's a little bit harder to skip. But. Actually, here. 